Let's jump back to live panel because I really want folks gotcha. to see how cool this is. So we're going to go back to you full screen too and let's get, jump into live panel because folks, you're going to be blown away by what Jeremy can do with this. And Jeremy, really I just want to, you mentioned something that I think I want to spend some time on and that is you can go to newtech.tv and sign up for a live demonstration with a new tech sales rep where it could be Jeremy, it could be someone else, but they're actually going to walk you through what Jeremy's doing now. Specific, your questions, it's a one-on-one -on -one demonstration deep dive that's super duper cool. So I wanted to get that graphic up here for a second, Jeremy. Now we're going to cut back to you. So again, this is a browser. I just opened up Chrome. So I'm going to the IP address of the TriCaster. Yep. And I've got several different options inside Live Panel. The first one that gets utilized probably more than most would be the audio mixer. Yep. So now I have fader control of the internal audio channels of the TriCaster. Now this becomes cool because I can run this off an iPad. I can have this sitting at front of house if I'm doing a live event, if I'm doing a house of worship, if I'm doing a corporate hybrid meeting event where I've got a large venue space that I'm mixing for in-room effect as also I'm mixing for the stream side. I have control over this remotely. So I this can walk all over the venue and hear how everything sounds, right? Exactly. Um, media playback. So if I've got internal graphics that I'm dealing with, uh, so here's my pre-recorded green screen content for virtual sets. Here's my other graphic bins, my other DDRs. I have all this capability so I can then farm out different jobs to different individuals in a production. I don't have to treat it as one man band. I can. That's what the TriCaster is designed for. But this gives you a lot more flexibility. Um, data link. This is how you set up bringing in external content for graphics. If you're coming up from scoreboards, RSS feeds, uh, video, um, or sorry. Uh, social media. Not only just social media, um, voting machines. That's what I was yep. talking about. For, like council meetings and stuff. Yep. I can set that web keys if I'm pulling out information from certain types of web sources. I can set that via data link. Um, we do have an internal switcher. I'm not a big fan of it. Because it's limited, it's just click, button, press, and that's what you're switching. So instead, I built my own. Oh! So now I have inside Builder, I can set up whatever I want to on how I want to run my production. I can click my sources across the top. If that's going to be an, an additional camera source, if I'm going to switch that. Um, overhead shots. There it goes. Uh, other things that are going on inside here, I can then switch via macros and then send that out to program. I have my start my streams. I have I can start my recordings. Um, other types can of you, ME can effects. Can you quickly explain what a macro is for those who've never had a TriCaster before? Yeah, so our macro, so pretty much anything the TriCaster can do, we can now create a macro and, and recall that. Whether or not that's switching sources, that's playing back a lower third, that's fading up audio. I mean, anything that the TriCaster is capable of doing based on its own internal control mechanism, we can then send that as a macro now we can have multiple effects happen at the same time. If I want to switch cameras and bring on a lower third, that's usually a couple button process. Well, I can create a macro that combines all those elements into one, now a single button press, and I can have four or five things happen together. And now I can map those macros to specific panels in the live panel boxes. I can hit one button and have a lower third come up and the audio cut from me to the preacher or whatever I want to do. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so here, here's a virtual set that I have set up. That was all based on something that was already done inside TriCaster. I'm just recalling it from this button press. Um, the PTZ control. I have a special page just for that. So just camera for PTZ presets. Now I'm able to do that. Uh, I can do those zoom ins. There's the wide shot. I can zoom in on the panel itself. So now I can give individual control of camera presets somewhere on the network. They can be sitting in the sanctuary. They can be sitting in the boardroom. They can be sitting on the event space. All their job is to do is to pick whichever camera preset. I've created windows so they can see that they're in preview and then whatever's going out on air. So there's so many different ways you can do this inside Live Panel. You have 16 pages that you can set up. And so from that, let me actually move my uh, preview window so I can see what's going on. And I'm able to then control that whatever page that I want to. I pick a blank one, for example, page nine. Let's just pick that, for example. Now you see what the blank canvas looks like. And so as you click on it, it's like, okay, what do I want to do? I can then size the boxes. I can change the background, add the text. And then, like we talk about macros, I don't want to record the macro. I want to pick one. So I can pick anything that's on the list. So some of these are the available ones that come with the system. Some of these are the ones that I created. So now you have access to this. That becomes your trigger. Now, when you think about training, when you think about who's actually going to run the system, when we talk about the main interface, 
you know, this is everything the TriCaster can do. A little if you want overwhelming. To simplify operation. Now you're simplifying that back down to I just have control over what Live Panel gives me. So, so that limits. So if I'm a house of worship, I can have one expert who sets up an easy to run show for a volunteer. If I'm mm -hmm. a high school, I can have the upperclassmen mapping all this stuff out while an underclassman, a freshman or a sophomore taking the 101 version of the course can be doing their stuff. And more importantly, if I'm in a corporate setting, I can actually allow a VP or someone who's doing the presentation to kind of run his own show, which gives them a little added feeling of control and power, right? Oh, exactly. <clears throat> so they can switch their camera sources. They can do like the virtual zooms and everything that I just did through the virtual set. I, I've got all my zooms and all my presets set up. I have this control have based on this panel just because how I created it. Thank you for watching this highlight from the Video Guys Live webinar. If you like this video or you want to learn more, check out the full webinar in our description or head on over to videoguys.com for more information.